the bag work a bottom apartment five b b b b you're now tuned into the apartment 5b podcast where we chop it up about hip-hop r&b sports love and life hosted by kill 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 What's good, what's good, what's good? You tune in Apartment 5B Podcast, hosted by your man here. Full squad in effect for tonight's show. Yo, starting off with Porsche. Porsche, what's going on, miss? How's it going, Kill? Everything is good, everything is good. First day back in the hood after three months off. It's a long day. Uh, DJ Rack One, what's going on, good brother? Ain't nothing, man. Just trying to maintain. Right. Just trying to maintain. No, no doubt. Stone so, from Into the Dome, that time in hip hop podcast. What's going on, good brother? Cheers, good people. Sipping. All right. No doubt, no doubt. Eddie out of LA. What's going on, good brother? Hey, man. I'm doing good, man. Maintain. Okay, Lynn. I see you with the Linden Boulevard. I see you, good brother. <laughs> Vague out of Brooklyn. What's going on, man? What's good, Vague? What up, man? Me and Tone always in sync, man. Double <laughs> cup, double <laughs> one. Whatever. I'm with you. <laughs> you already know what it is, me. Let's jump right into it. So, at the end of last week's show, Vague had a good idea coming up with a hip hop Hall of Fame. And it's one of them shows that sounded so good. Then when I started digging in the crates, it's going to be a long show. So people always be like, kill when you do your March Madness shows, why don't you ever show the behind the scenes? Are y'all picking the brackets and doing all that? You just give us the final bracket. This is going to be the behind the scenes of figuring out how do we come up with the criteria to get into the Hall of Fame for hip hop? What is the Hall of Fame of hip hop? All those great things. We're going to look at everybody's criteria. Then we're going to try and come up with four to six things. And then we're going to throw some names out there. This is the guinea pig episode. So we may switch some things. You know, we're, we're starting off with the 80s, which is a different era than the 90s. So some things may have to be tweaked. Classic albums may need to get tweaked to classic songs. So, you know, this is this is the behind the scenes that folks want to see. So first thing I did was I'm an NBA Hoops fan, first and foremost. I said, what is it to get into the NBA Hall of Fame? Then I realized there is no NBA Hall of Fame. It's the Basketball Hall of Fame. Yeah. They do the NBA. They do men's, women's, college, and the national, yep. everything. So the first criteria, and here's the other thing, same thing with the MVP. The NBA is never going to tell you the criteria for the MVP. Why? Because then they'd be stuck to that. They'd be stuck in this box of, okay, it has to be this. Plus, it starts arguments every year on first take and every other show. Same thing with the Basketball Hall of Fame. There's really no criteria. The only set criteria is the person has to be retired for at least four seasons. That's really basically the criteria. Um, and again, the Hall of Fame for basketball is pro, college, Olympics, women, and the national. Um, the thing that I found out is you have to have a quote unquote decent career. Now, again, what is decent? I don't know. I'm sure we all have different definitions of what decent can be. There are nine people on the committee. Each player has to get at least seven votes to stay in contention. Six or fewer votes and you're out. Zero votes. And basically, if you don't get seven votes then you get to be on the ballot again next year but if you get zero votes for three years your name is done you're never getting into the hall of fame if you get zero votes and the people on the voting committee is a secret it's like who's bat wayne i mean who's bat wayne who's batman who's superman it's a secret to who these seven people are who are voting because i'm sure they probably be getting death threats and everything by now so again with the hip-hop with, with with the nba or basketball there is really no criteria except you being retired for four seasons um which is hard to do in hip-hop because people ain't gonna retire we've talked about before would ice cube maybe be higher on people's list if he stopped rapping after the predator you know what i mean but they you know you keep krs got 18 hours <laughs> you know what i mean so you know, it, it's kind of like that whole thing is is decent, is, um you know, about stopping at the eventual time. And here's a question I want to ask y'all. With the hip hop, fall, hall, I, I want to make sure we're talking, because what I liked about this Basketball Hall of Fame is that it encompasses everything. So this is the hip hop Hall of Fame. It's not just the Lyricist Hall of Fame. It's not just the Dopest Voice Hall of Fame. So we're talking about the whole gambit. 
And what does the whole gambit mean? And what do I mean by that? One of my criteria, well, my criteria is impact on the culture, at least one classic, at least three albums in your discography, and you write your own rhymes. Now, is writing your own rhymes that important to everybody else up here? Yes. Yeah. Okay, Port says yes. Uh, uh, Wreckish nodding his head tone. Yeah, I, I, would, I would say 90%. You should write your own. Okay. I think 10% you're going to have other cats in the studio giving you a line. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and keep in mind, I'm not even talking about line. I'm not, I'm talking, yeah. I'm not talking about oh, that. Cool. I'm like, yo, tone, I, no, I'm saying, Tone, here's my rhyme book. Here you go, sir. And you taking the book and you... So, no, not help. Not That's assist, forbid. But, okay. That's okay. <laughs> Eddie, what about you? Are you on board with that? I, I am to to a point. Um, I think it might wind up being a little biased against some female. Okay, MCs, so. okay, good point, Vague. What about you? Yeah, I'm kind of with Eddie on that because, like, the more I think about people who I know had uh, ghostwriters, uh, maybe not write their whole catalog or their a whole album, but like a lot of their music. It's like certain people, like somebody like Biz. I wouldn't keep biz out of the hip hop hall of fame you know and right you know a couple of people wrote for him so mm -hmm. right now that's a good point so that may be something we gotta put an asterisk on so uh that'll be an say, asterisk. could the asterisk on writing be that like you have written before like at some point you've you've written so you've proven your pen or does it have to be because for me like it doesn't I feel like if someone's proven that they can write and it's it's held up, then if they've had ghostwriters later, no worries. Like that's still, they still merit a consideration. Do you know what all I mean? Right. But if someone's like never written before and it's all been ghostwriting, that also says something. So, th but that's just me. And we may have to put the asterisks because I feel like each era is going to be different. The right. 80s is much more of a single driven you know, especially the beginning of the 80s was much more single driven. You know what I mean? So we may have to switch out classic albums for classic songs. I feel like in the 80s, it was still those days of, like I said, if we all was hanging out in Philly and we all became a group and Porsche couldn't rhyme, me and Rec Mayor wrote her rhymes for it. You know what I mean? So in the 80s, you still have to understand, like, you know, it not to say it was okay, but it was like with Salt and Pepper. It's like, yo, these some shorties, we want to have them do a reply song to Dougie Fresh's The Show. They fly. I'm going to write they rhymes. We're going to do, you know what I mean? So that may have to be an actress. Uh, Vang, what are your four criteria? Uh, damn, I didn't know he was coming to me first. Uh, well, no, that's cool. I mean, I got him. I got, I wrote everything down, but I didn't know if you wanted to stay him yourself. No, I got him. Uh, um, okay. So for me, one is impact, of course. Um, and by impact, I just mean like you had to have put an imprint on the game, you know, not just a, uh, a song that was popular or anything like that. Like, I mean, that comes with the territory, obviously, but almost it feeling like the spotlight is on you at some given point in hip hop history. You know what I'm saying? Whether that's a long stretch of time or two albums, um, in some cases, maybe one album where, you know, everything was about you. Uh, the other one is flow. Obviously, that varies from MC to MC. But I think if your flow is impressionable or, uh, you know, it has an impact in some regards, you know, that could be taken into consideration, especially if it's a flow that you pioneered. Um, skill, uh, skill level just speaks for itself. You know what I'm saying? Wordplay, bars, you know what I'm saying? Uh, not necessarily you having to be like a, a black thought. You can you can be a DMX or a Tupac where you know your lyrics are a little bit more straightforward, but the uh, impact of your lines is kind of what you know gives them that strength as a lyricist. And uh, classics, I feel like you know you, you gotta at least have one, um, but that's like really the bare minimum. Um, maybe I'm being harsh. Maybe I feel like you should have at least two. Or a classic and one that's like really close to one. Um, but yeah, that's my four. All right, all right. Um, cool on that. All right, uh, Porsche, what are yours? So mine's, mine are a little different. Um, I, I think, I don't know if I was a little bit more harsh than everybody else was, but for me, um, it, you gotta be at least 10 years 
in in the game. There has to be some numerical value there because like someone's not going to come out this year and then be in the Hall of Fame this year as well. Like it's just to me like it's got to breathe. So I said 10 years um impact on the genre just like uh Veg explained. Um impact on other artists. So did you influence other artists in one way or another? Um whether that's I I'm going to use like um El Ilmatic with Elmatic, um, Elzai, so something like that. Um, and then minimum five five albums in the discography. And I didn't I stayed away from classics personally because I feel like that's so subjective. Um, and I don't know who would decide what is a classic. So um, I didn't go there. And then consistency of the discography. So are you consistently putting out or if you have like 15 albums are at least like the majority of them are dope you know what i mean so that's that's mine all right i'm gonna wait for everybody because i got some questions and um like for instance 10 years since the release so are you saying that you wouldn't be thought about in the hip-hop hall of fame if you came out in 84 until 1994 not that you or did you have to have a good career for those 10 years? No, you wouldn't be okay, considered so this, until 94. The okay. Yeah, the minimum. the minimum. The minimum to get it. All right, cool. Uh, Rec, what about you? Unmute your mic. Um, longevity uh, is my first one. And for the first go around, we're doing it. We're doing the 80s. So longevity for me, it could be just a five year stretch being that, you know, the, the game changed from 80 to 85 from 86 to 90. So for me, the longevity is like five years, a four or five year span. Um, classics is the second one. I agree with Porsche, it's subjective, but I'm looking at it more so from the standpoint of the majority. Like if six of us up here can say that one album, we can agree cohesively that it's a classic, then I'm good with that. Um, lyrics, it's like Veg said, you, you gotta be saying something or at least the flow has to be right. Um, and then influence. Um, you know, if you can influence the culture in that five years time span, I don't see why you wouldn't be considered. All right. Eddie, what about you? All right. Um, similar to uh, what um, Vegas and, and Porsche and Rex said, um, I got influence in there. Um, and so influence is like influence on, on other artists that, you know, is coming after you. Um, and then impact. So impact is impact on the culture, impact on the genre, impact on the music, you know, um, what you bring. So um, sometimes th that that could, you know, go hand in hand. But to me, they're, they're two kind of separate things. You know, one is on the genre and the culture. One is on other artists. Um, I got consistency of catalog. Um, and then classics. So um, in this case, yeah, it could be albums or songs. Um, someone could be a singles artist and, um, you know, have, you know, influence and impact in that way. But, you know, if you go through their albums, maybe you might not say, yeah, all right, you know. All right, you kind of freezing up, Eddie. All right. All right, so what about you? You know, I'm pretty much in sync with, with everyone on the panel uh, with the criteria. Uh, to Porsche point, I always look at everything in 10 year increments because to me, <laughs> There's exceptions to every rule. Like, for example, I know we'll get into that. Yes, Biggie is in there. We know he didn't have 10 years, but I don't think anyone with any knowledge of hip hop would be like, uh, Biggie didn't meet the criteria. But I use 10 because there's a lot of fly by night artists in hip hop, just like in any genre. So give me 10, give me a decade, man. What did you do for 10 years? You know, as far as classic. Yeah, it is subjective, but on the other end, there are some universal classics that I, I believe that most people would agree on. And if you have one of them, that's a big boost. And I also would say you should have two great albums as well. And that can be subjective. But for example, Snoop Dogg, Dogg Style is a classic. I, you know, I'm from, I'm from North Carolina. I know that. I don't have to be from Compton to understand that or from Houston to understand that. You know what I mean? So there are certain 
albums and pieces of work and songs that are just hip hop classics. So, you know, influence, impact. I think everyone said that that kind of goes without saying, um, you know, when you think of somebody like like Biz Market, just real quick, when Vague said he's not your traditional MC, but his impact on the culture and everything he did for 30 years would, would give him some votes to get into the hip hop hall of fame. So I'm kind of in sync with everyone else with the criteria. All right, now the things that I saw that we most people agreed on was impact. So that's definitely there. Um, I want to say the classics, at least one is, is going to be one of them. Here's my question to people who had influence, like Eddie, what is impact versus influence? I know you s- try and explain it, but then you froze up for a second. So oh, sorry impact is, no, it's all good. Hip hop, hip impact is on the culture, but the influence is on your peers. Yes. Exactly. Okay. All right. All right. So we got impact, classic at least once, influence. We've got flows. Now, is flows different from skills, Vague? I think so. Because, okay. I mean, I think, like, I, I found people who, who like certain, like, somebody, some people like Buster because they just like his flow. You know what I'm saying? They're not really listening to what he's saying, you know, critiquing his lyrics and all of that. And obviously he has a certain skill to what he does, but, you know, some of that also became uh, came later because uh, there was times where, you know, Buster just kind of said anything. But what was dope about him was his his flow and his energy um, and his presentation. So I don't think I don't think flow is a category like to me is related to skill. Uh, but it's not the same thing. Okay. Would we be able to put it as lyrics and then under that is skills and flow? I think so. Oh, yeah. All right. All right. So we would put lyrics and then skills and flow would kind of be one A and one B. All right. So what we're looking at is minimum of 10 years in the game before you could be considered. Um, so even like you said, so maybe even something with big, just like with the NBA, like, you know, if Big died in 95, you know, if he dropped in 95, 2005, he'd be eligible, I guess you could say, for it. So not really based off of how many years you were in the game. Yeah. We've got Impact, at least one classic. We've got um, Influence. We've got Lyrics under that, Flows and Skills, and we got Longevity. So we got about six things to get into the Hip Hop Hall of Fame. And we'll have to tweak them bit by bit. But again, this is like the, 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 the first ep. Let's start with um, Curtis Blow. Curtis Blow. Eighty-eight albums. He's the first rapper to be signed to a major label. Um, first album, Curtis Blow had the brakes on it. And this goes to show people for young folk watching. This is back when albums. Curtis's first album had seven songs, which is an EP nowadays. His second album had seven songs. Shit, his third album had five songs. You know what I mean? He yep. was dropping an album every year you know what i mean um so you got curtis blow had the breaks one of the biggest hip-hop songs ever if you don't know is the curtis blows the breaks um the deuce really didn't produce anything tough didn't produce anything the best rapper on the scene really didn't produce anything his fifth album ego trip is the one where he had eight million stories aj scratch basketball Mm -hmm. um you know so that was like probably his biggest album so somebody like Curtis Blow, looking at the criteria, um, impact. What what is Curtis Blow's impact on the game? Uh, and it doesn't have to be nothing, yeah. nothing drawn out, but like so, just you know, elevator speech. Impact oh, oh. Curtis Blow on the game. Oh man, I mean, you you talking about literally the first superstar solo artist in, of the culture? <laughs> you right. know, so any any youngster listening, please do your research on Curtis Blow. I mean. It is what it is. The Breaks is still highly influenced, legendary. People study Curtis Blow, not necessarily for his lyrical ability, because that would be like the Kazes and Modis and all of them early on with Mel, but they study his presentation, his look. You know what I mean? He, he was a superstar. You know what I mean? It wasn't like the Sugar Hill Gang was more of a novelty act with a big song on the radio. At the time, people looked at Curtis Blow the same way people looked at a rock star in that genre. You know what I mean? So I think that alone, the impact of that and basketball, people, I mean, that was a big thing when he dropped basketball and eight million oh, yeah. stuff like that. So I just think with the with who he was at the time 
and to be first is like being Jack Johnson in boxing. You know what I'm saying? You are automatically a legend. You automatically in there because you are one of the first standards for for the culture. So I would definitely say it goes without saying. All right, and for the sake of time, I'm gonna do this like I do with my meetings at work. We ain't gonna do no piggybacking. So if somebody already said it, there's no need to be like, oh, and I'm a piggyback. <laughs> like I tell my people at meetings, we don't piggyback. We just somebody said it, they said it. So and I agree with you 100 on that. Now let's look at classics. Curtis, I don't personally think Curtis has classic albums, but he has classic songs in an era where we were 12 inch heavy. Tone just said it, basketball was in the NBA. That's literally the first time basketball and hip hop kind of connected with, mm -hmm. with that song. I hated the movie, but Bow Wow had the damn movie with basketball. Yep. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, um, okay, so I feel like he has the classics, the influences there. Now, here's the thing, and people gotta remember this. We're going to Vegas, the, the, the resident MC, with lyrics, flows, and skills, I would say for Curtis Blow's time, he was nice. You know what I mean? Like, you know, I, I, I yeah. beg, you're the resident MC, you weigh in, you know? Any beef think, with that assessment? I think so. I think Tone uh, said it like plainly, like, you know, he was the soulist superstar. He was the, he was the standard for a LL uh, and for a Jay-Z, for anybody who's like a soloist and was like that guy. I think for the time and how they were rapping, um, and you're talking about MC, Master of Ceremonies, you know, like you can't tell me when Curtis Blow was on Crush Groove and he did his set, you ain't feel that. You know right. what I'm saying? Like, right. like it was. Oh, how, it how was did I forget if I, if I ruled the world? I forgot which yeah, I, yeah. I, ruled yeah. the world. I ruled the world. Yeah. 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 I totally forgot about that. Joke. So, yeah, he, um, like, he was that guy. All right. And, the, and another asterisk for people watching at home, and I love these episodes because it's going to teach a lot about the 80s. Longevity was hard in the 80s because, again, we're at a time when the record industry didn't know what rap was. You know, people thought rap was going to be here from 79 to 85, and that's that. So I, I, I think for a lot of these artists, we're going to have to kind of put the asterisks and give them a pass on the longevity because it may not necessarily be the artist's fault. It's just the industry around them was changing, you know, because by the time running them got here, nobody wanted to hear that hippie hop, you know, to the hip hop no more, you know, so that's not Curtis's fault, you know, it's just that the game was expanding and, and, and people didn't know where to go. And at that time, again, biting was forbidden. If biting was forbidden right now, a lot of y'all favorite rappers wouldn't even be here because they latched on to whatever is the new style that, you know, you couldn't do at that time. All right, so we got it. Curtis blows in the Hall of Fame. We're good with that? Yep, yep. Absolutely. Okay. First inductee into the Hall of Fame. Uh, let, let's go for somebody that may be a little, not off, but you know, questionable. People ask me about this all the time. I'm gonna go to Big Daddy Kane. Uh, Cause people always ask me, how is Kane a top five MC? And he only had one, maybe two albums out. Kane had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven albums out. And truth be told, only two of them were dope. You know what I mean? I personally believe Long Live a Kane and It's a Big Daddy thing are both classics. You know what I mean? Agreed. But let's look at Kane. Uh, Vague, you're from Brooklyn, so we'll start with you. Impact on the game. I, yes. I, I would hope Kane. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you said it like, like it was a prosecutor on the stand. Like, yes. I'm yeah, like, like, yes. yes. From okay. Brooklyn, Marcy. All now, right. um, yeah, I, I think without a doubt, anybody who doesn't put Kane in the Hall of Fame for all the right reasons is stupid because you already mentioned like the, the 12 inch, right? Kane had classics. If you if he had the same kind of run Curtis Blow had, where it's like he didn't really have no classic albums, but he had classic singles. Kane had classic singles, but he also had two classic albums. Like right. almost flawless albums, you know what I'm saying? Um obviously he took a steep dive after that but you're talking about influence not only in style and, and how he carried himself but lyrically you know what i'm saying he's the precursor to jay-z all y'all who be all up jay-z ass because yo he's the greatest by from that come from kane um so like his videos everything his presence like that same presence that we talked about with curtis blow Big Daddy Kane exhibited that as well, you know what I'm saying? When he did a show, he commanded it. You know, he really danced with his dancers. When he did a video, 
You know what I'm saying? You knew who the star was in the video without him even having to say a word yet. Um, so yeah, without a doubt, I could. It's it's. I don't even know how it could be debatable uh, with King, even with him only really having uh, two dope or two classic albums and then kind of falling off after that. So. Yeah, I mean, preferably it's not debatable, but I'm still getting used to younger folk actually watch this show, so. You know, and, and like I said, there's been questions by people I know who are in their 30s and 40s. Like, you know what I mean? Like, yo, how does this dude only got two albums? But again, and for people who may not be watching the 12 inch was a single. It was back in the day. Maybe you didn't get a whole record deal. Like with Cold Chillin', great example. They would yeah, give you a 12 one, inch deal. Yeah, yeah go ahead, one, one point real quick. Yeah. I think something you said earlier uh, goes to, to Kane. At some point, um, Big Daddy Kane and Rock Kim were considered like the best MC. So to me, if you were at any point in your career, you were looked at as the best. And people, you know, at, at some point, you know, even though KRS One and AL and them, they was up there, people wanted to pit Rock M against Big Daddy Kane. Everybody know they want them to battle at the Apollo. All this is real stuff. They both talked about this 30 years later. People looked at Kane like a god and Rock M the god. You know what I'm saying? So Kane had the total package, man. So I mean, at one point, he was looked at as the guy. Even if it was five minutes, he was the guy for five minutes. Right. And um, the 12 is kind of like uh, Eddie, the show we did with Penny when we were talking about how right. come some classic albums aren't mentioned. It's because the 12 inches lived for so long. You know, EPMD is a great example. They may have dropped five singles before they finally dropped their album. You know what I mean? Yeah. So the same thing with Jungle Brothers. They're dropping four to five singles. So when Kane dropped Raw, Raw like shut everything down. You know what I mean? And again, this is what I mean by you don't have to be there to understand you in my opinion you had to be there to understand a hundred percent of it you know what i mean you can read you can learn and all that stuff but to get the whole gambit you're never going to get the whole gambit of what raw did to the game unless you were there and you knew that when raw came on and the 12 inch could live for six months and we was good with that this isn't today's hip-hop where we need a new album every two months so we forget about you nah like raw could live by itself and then when you come back with set it off after all, it was like, yo, nobody was even rapping that fast. Like at the time, K was yeah. coming in with Temple's 112, 120 yeah. BBMs. Yeah. You know what I mean? And then you follow that back up with Ain't No Half Stepping. And it just, so just keeping in mind that, yeah, the albums weren't there, but if you were coming up in the 80s, the 12 inch was just as important as the album. All right, here's one that I'm gonna throw with this. This gonna be one I don't know where it's gonna go. I wanna see this Ice T. Now we got Ice T, he drops in 87, but I just was watching Rapping with Mario Van Peebles the other day. I totally forgot Ice T was in that movie. I remember him from Breaking, but I did not remember him from Rapping. So mm -hmm. Ice T been rapping in movies since 84 with Breaking. So even so he's got Ron Pays, he's got Power, he's got the Iceberg, OG Gangster, Home Invasion, Ice T 4, and the seventh deadly sin. I see some consider the godfather of gangster rap, which he gracefully gives that to Schooly D, and I will always respect him for that. Yeah. Um, does Ice T get into the hip hop hall of fame? Porsche, you're the closest to the West Coast, so I'm gonna go with you. Does Ice T, in your opinion, check all the boxes for impact, at least one classic album, influence, lyrics, and longevity? Absolutely. I mean, like, this is one of those things that I, I don't know how someone could debate that. And, and just the fact that it's widely accepted that he's the godfather of gangster rap and he's like, no, it, like it's Schooly D, um, just that alone to me is so impactful and so influential, um, not to mention his albums, his, his, he had a very strong run like one of his discography is one of the strongest consistent discographies out there in 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 the west and maybe in the east too um so yes without a doubt ice tea i mean his yeah like his influence is undeniable for sure now this may be one of the ones i get voted off because i don't see it it's one of those things where i think he should be there but going off of our criteria, I mean, again, this is just me. I don't see Ice-T having a classic album. You know what I mean? I see him having very good albums. I don't even know if Ice-T has a classic song that I can go to and say, this is the Ice-T song. Like if somebody said, where do I start with Ice-T? I'd be like, 
maybe that shit off of New Jack City. Like, I really can't just be like, this is this is where you go. I mean, his influence on West Coast hip hop is undeniable. I definitely get it. I never thought Ice T was lyrical like that. Um, I mean, his flows was subpar to me, and I don't know about his longevity because I don't know anybody who ever said, "Oh shit, Ice T's coming to town." I gotta go see Ice T live in concert. So I, I know I'm not. I may be the odd man out. Rep, what about you? What, what does Ice T make it? So and again and again, this is why. This, again, it's the big guinea pig episode because yeah. everybody's gonna be based off of this. The criteria we came up with. You know, Rack does I see get into the Hall of Fame? For me, he does solely off of impact and influence. Okay. Um, the, uh, I get it. The, the 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 albums maybe not for you, but for some people, mm. man, that cover that album with Darlene on the cover, they swear by that album. But that, but you know why they swear by the album? Because you just want to study. it. Because it's right, Darlene on right. it. Right. But but here's the thing. That album. Shit, had if that's the point, two live crew could get the damn album. You <laughs> being the goddamn Hall of Fame. We talk about naked but women on album covers. The album has substance. Okay. The album has substance behind it. It's not a bad album. Um, I don't but know. But is it a classic? That's the thing. I don't like, know if I would consider it a classic. I may have to go back and revisit it. I'm not saying it's not. I'm just not. Okay. I'm not to the point to where I can speak to it today. I'll go back and listen to it. Um, hold, but, on, hold on. I'm sorry, finish right, and then we'll go to bed. I was going to say, but but for impact and for how long his impact has stood, I mean, people still go to Ice T for shit. When it's, when it's time to break bread or there's issues, Ice T sometimes is in the forefront of that. He might not be on the J Prince level, but people will go to him to break bread. You know what I'm saying? Like, he still is looked at as an OG. And, and okay, I, highly, but- I highly respect the OG. Now here's the thing, I totally agree with that, but that's not in our qualifications. The qualification is not can you broker a peace treaty when niggas right. are beefing. Okay. You know? So if we go so no, no, no. so if we go surely, let me look. No, no, but no, but right if he makes it, that's cool. I could be outvoted. That's cool. Vague. I mean, what were you gonna I say? Mean, go ahead. What were you gonna say, Vague? A direct you was gonna say something? Nah, go ahead, you got it. Oh. Um I think Ice T gets in there because um definitely impact. Um, especially for West Coast hip hop, um, not just gangster rap. Um, songs like Six in the Morning are his The Breaks, you know what I'm saying? So he has songs in a way that Curtis Blow had songs, you know what I'm saying? So it's, I think he falls under that Curtis Blow category. Like he was the guy before Ice Cube, you know what I'm saying? He was the guy before Snoop. Dr. Now let me ask you a question, and it may be my my West Coast ignorance, so that's why I'm asking. Outside six in the morning, what else does Ice have? Like colors, to compete? colors yeah, colors. New Jack Hustler, remember that? Okay. New Jack Hustler, colors. Why? Yeah, okay. plenty of joints, man. You yeah, <laughs> that's right. He had he right. had substantial singles like Big. Yeah, he had that cop killer joint. Cop, cop killer. killer. Cop, <laughs> cop killer. Hey, look, it might not have hit yeah, you. I, 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 I didn't even include body count. I didn't even include body count. Yeah, okay. I, I, All right. Might not have hit you in the right. head, but the singles. That, 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 that's that's cool. I'm outvoted, so Ice T gets in. I think so. Right. I think so. All right, I'm very Tom. happy with that. So what? <laughs> is what? Porsche is she's like, yo. I'm very happy about that. Pop loses. <laughs> Listen, Pac lost the Fonte, and I still can't sleep at night. Right, but anyway, right, right. <laughs> um, I see, yeah, like, we'll tell you about that later. <laughs> like, please understand that at the time, East Coast was so like um, highlighted for for rap and. For someone like Ice T to popularize gangster rap like that in the West, where people weren't really taking the West seriously, you have to understand that that takes a level of influence and impact and substance to get to that level at at the climate. I mean, I I was in Canada. Like my my opinions are always void and null because I'm Canadian. Um, so I was never in the states when all of these things were going on. But I know that. Ice T was was somebody you heard all the time at the time, you know. Okay. Um, but that's just that's just me. Sorry, I'm so happy no, that no, no, you guys no. you guys decided. I, not, not at all. <laughs> I, I always say if there's holes in my hip hop game, it's gonna be a lot of West Coast hip hop. You know what I mean? It didn't speak to me, but this ain't about me. This is everything. So I got no problem getting outvoted. So Ice T is in the hip hop Hall of Fame. Let's go with Houdini, out of Brooklyn, New York, going back to '83. Yes. First album, Houdini. 
<laughs> they already like anybody from Brooke. Nah. Look, this is what we could do. If you say Brooke, Hall of Fame, they're in. <laughs> Damn, they're in. Yeah. Um, so we got Houdini's first album was '83. Their second album, Escape, which to me is a hip hop classic, had the yeah. Five Minutes of Fong, uh, Big Mouth, um, Freaks Come Out at Night. Their follow up album with Black and Back had One Love. Um, then after that, kind of went downhill with Open Sesame. These niggas went on a goddamn flying carpet, bag of tricks, and then eventually they got signed by So So Def, which I thought was a dope look by Jermaine Dupri. For people who don't know, Jermaine Dupri yeah. was a dancer as a as a kid with Houdini, so I thought it was totally dope that now he was Jermaine Dupri and he went back and gave his people's um, a deal. I thought that was extremely dope. So Houdini, does Houdini get into the Hall of Fame? Ed. You're from Brooklyn. What do you say? Does Houdini get in? Impact, classics, influence, lyrics, longevity. Does Houdini get in? I think, you know, there, there was a time when um, I, I, I remember, and, and I was young, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm younger than a lot of y'all. I'm, I'm, I'm younger than all of y'all on the panel, honestly. But um, no, I, I remember hearing that, that Houdini, like my dad played that stuff heavy and they had joints. I mean, they had the singles. Um, they, they, you know, if I remember they, they were pretty big, you know? Um, so, um, you know, yeah, yeah, y'all could probably speak more to, you know, at the time, you know, cause your age, but, um, as far as for me, like, you know, they're, they're still, I, I, I felt like at the time they were a household name. Um, all right, all right, no doubt. So, what about you, Houdini, and the hip hop? Oh, man, man, I'm, I'm I'm really on the fence. All right, we come back to you. Yeah, we come back to you. Give you more time to think. Yeah, come back to me. Man. All right, we come back to you, Rack. What about Houdini, man? Their their time span was short but impactful. Um, you just named off what three albums that had bangers. Yeah. That, if we doing the 80s party, I'm dropping at least four of them. Um, impact is there. Lyrics for the time. I mean, look at One Love. You look at uh, Big Mouth. Uh, Friends. I mean, for that time period, yes. You, you have to count them. Because if you look at the artists that didn't have uh, what they were able to have as far as the stability, I think they were the culmination of that. You know, talking about the Cold Clutch and all those groups that didn't get the shot that Houdini actually got, that's the culmination of it. They're getting in right. for me. All right, Porsche? Yeah, I, I, I agree with Rec. Um, I, I won't piggyback, but I just, I agree with Rec. Like, he, he nailed it. Um, the singles, the impact of the singles. Um, yeah, I, I would say yes. Yeah. And for me, Houdini gets in. Like you said, Ed, I was there. The Freaks Come Out at Night, Big Mouth. There's so many classic record songs. I felt like yeah. Escape was a classic album. Um, and I think they would have gotten more shine, but I know for a lot of times, being next to Run DMC, they just always seem like the little brother of the two yeah. MCs and the yeah. DJ. So I felt like Run DMC being so big kind of casted it like a, a shadow over just how dope yes. they were. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I think what, not just that, but a million things that may have made Run DMC better. Russell played a huge part in Run DMC. Like if it one, one go back, thing, we yeah. gotta talk about. What's up, Ed? No, so well, I, I wanted to add. I, I wanted to add something um, that that I just thought of. I think with Houdini, uh, kind of the same with Curtis Blow. I feel like their sound uh, at some point just sounded dated, real quick. Yeah. Once the the sound of of hip hop started changing, like maybe it was their voice or their flows, like. They're really old school, you know, and I don't think, you know, their sound kind of um, transitioned well. Transitioned well, exactly. Right. Yeah, thanks for right. And, and the truth be told, that's going to be said for a lot of the MCs um, that we talk about. But one of the things that I think helped run DMC and will, of course, get to them um, was Russell's. You know, a lot of things that run DMC did was because Russell said do it. You know, and I don't know if Houdini had a Russell to be like, this is the new sound we're going to go with. And this is going to be the name of the group. And this is going to be the single. Like, I didn't know until I saw this thing um, that the Roots were doing on AMC that Run DMC didn't even want the guitars in Rockbox. 
You know what I mean? They was like, nah, we just want the drums. You know, and they, Russell was like, fine, we'll put that on the B side, but I think the guitars is going to win. And of course, the guitar, you know, they told the DJs to play the side without the guitar, but they played, the, you know. So again, I think like Russell was a coach for running them. And I think which is crazy because, them. which is crazy because running them, he was on profile, not even on Dev Jam, but that's another whole right. story. Right. Yeah. And keeping in mind, Larry Smith, who did a lot of work for Houdini, also was doing a lot of stuff for Run DMC too. Vegas, Brooklyn, does Houdini make it? Yeah, absolutely. For everything everybody said. And, um, I think one thing about Houdini, like thinking about their music, like Ed hit the nail on the head about their sound not being able to transfer to like whatever the next sound is. But I feel like what made Houdini so impactful and even different for a Run DMC, I think in a in a different timeline, if we're going to do comic books or whatever, they kind of had the uh, the advancement of the old school flow to me versus a uh, uh, Curtis yeah. Blow. Like Curtis Blow was kind of like standard old school, like a Melly Mel and them rap like that and all that. But there was something about Houdini that felt a little bit more aggressive and lyrical um, in the way they, you know, the way they spit their rhymes. Maybe they come a little bit more from that uh, Grandmaster Cash tree where even when you hear him, he's kind of the precursor to King. So, um, but again, when hip hop changed, and you know they sound like you know five minutes of funk and all of that wasn't really the sound of the streets you know um the kind they became casualties of that but i definitely think they get in because they had all those elements they have a classic album they had impact for sure um what they had lyrics and flows uh they was excellent songwriters so yeah man they they had a time where houdini was shit you know what I'm saying? You get that little hat with the string with no shirt on in the 80s. Yeah, that was, that, that, was, that was never dope. But uh, so, and, 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 can I make one quick point, uh, Kia? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So obviously, do. I mean, with the, with the panel, Houdini's going to get in. But since we was kind of equating this to like the NBA, well, Basketball Hall of Fame, to me, Houdini is not hall of, a Hall of Fame group, but they might not be in first ballot for me. For, you know what I'm okay. saying? Like they're gonna get in like, the second ballot anyway, cause they legends and all that. I might not have them as a first ballot, but since we was kind of looking at like the the World Hall of Fame of basketball, you know, so right. No disrespect to Houdini, I love them. Nah, 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 nah no disrespect at all. That's Next that's up, it. next up, the Fat Boys. You know what I mean? Again, out of Brooklyn. It's a lot of groups coming out of Brooklyn. Uh, <laughs> They had one, you want me two. To change my shirt. You want me to go for the Brooklyn shirt? On? <laughs> <laughs> we got we got seven albums with the Fat Boys. For me, the Fat Boys get in to the Hip Hop Hall of Fame. I think for me, the first album, Fat Boys, um, uh, Stick 'Em, uh, Can You Feel It, was a classic album. I definitely feel like they had the influence again at that time. People don't say this enough. Cool Rock Ski was a dope ass MC at that time in 1984. Cool Rock Ski was barring niggas before bars were even a thing. And I get it that most people forget they, they you fall into the fat boys. I think when people think the fat boys, they think of big and beautiful and crushing and doing the twist with Ch Chuck yeah. and Chuck and all that bullshit. Go buy that first fat boys album. Now my OG schooled me too. He's like, yo, that's a disco three album, which was yeah. the fat boys original yeah. name before they became the Fat Boys. He's like, that's a Disco 3 album. That was the Disco 3 from Brooklyn back in 83, the way they be rhyming. Cool Rock Ski was barring niggas before they were bars. Buffy on the beatbox was crazy. If you wasn't trying to beatbox like Buff and doing the whatever the fucking making noise with your mouth and your hands, like you were not hip hop. Um, I don't even know what noise I just made. I'm getting old. <laughs> you know, just, I, I definitely think that they had the skills for their time and i mean i think they didn't have the longevity but i'll put an asterisk on that because i felt like the fat boys were like the first guinea pigs of hip-hop like you know what we could possibly get y'all in a movie and play some dumb mm -hmm. orderlies and then we could get y'all with chubby chucker and we so i feel like they were hip-hop's first guinea pig that didn't allow them to have the longevity and to me it's the first like I said, to go from the Disco 3 just being that first hip Fat Boys album was just all about hip hop. That's all it was about. It wasn't about no singles. It wasn't about nothing. But then by the second album, the Fat Boys are back. It was about singles and we're going to try to market you this way towards hip hop. So I got the Fat Boys getting in. Porsche, what about you? Um. <laughs> Porsche, like, I don't know. I don't I, know. I, I don't know. I, I mean, 
it, it would be ridiculous to say that there wasn't, um, you know, influential and, and popular at the time. But I don't know that I would like, because now, now we have populated the Hall of Fame with people. And now I'm kind of being like, well, like the Fat Boys and Curtis Blow, like to me, it's just not as equal. Does that make sense? Like you can make a case for almost anyone in the 80s. So yeah. I- I'm going to pass on the Fat Boys personally, okay. although I love the Fat Boys, but I don't, I don't want to put them in there. Sorry. All right. No, I got that. No reason at all. Rack one, you got what's up with the Fat Boys? Look, man, jailhouse rack, stick them. Can you feel it? I think I agree with you. I think that um, they were young and didn't, you know, impressionable. I think their success uh, killed their career, to be honest. And then and here's, the fun- and here's the funny part. You, boys, you talk about Curtis Blow. Curtis Blow managed the Fat Boys. Yeah, that's yeah. the wild part. Yeah, yeah. he did. You know, Curtis, Curtis was some of the magic behind the scenes to make them the Fat Boys and make them be that and everything. So just funny that you brought like Curtis Blow Fat Boys and they were the manager. So Rep, what you got? You hear that? <sighs> They're on the fence only because, in my opinion, only because I don't think they got a chance to um, live up to their full potential. Those first okay. couple albums were, were fire. And then, like you said, as they started going on to, you know, I don't want to say bigger and better things because it wasn't. Uh, and the longevity of it, um, it killed their career because they got looked at as a novelty act and could not come back from that. Um, We're not doing first ballots. We're just doing all they getting in, period, right? You, you get in or you get out? You in or you out? They're going to get in, but it ain't going to be on the first ballot. All right, so what you got? Oh, I swear, man. Uh, <laughs> you know, you know, I love Disco 3, man. You know, my big bro played it all the time, man. You know what I'm saying? So I love the Fat Boys, man. But you know what? Everybody in the eighties can't get in, man. So exactly. I'm gonna have, Thank no, you, they, they can't go in. They can't go Thank in. you. Thank you. Everybody right. can't get in. All right. Just keep it in mind, I get you. Everybody can't get in. But for a second in time, the Fat Boys was bigger than fucking Run DMC. They were. So here. I get every. But, I but get that everybody can't get in. Time. in. Right. But I mean, what we said earlier with Kane that if you was the dopest MC, even if it was just for a minute, there was a time when you was the dopest okay, MC. Yeah. Again, they I'm were not, popular, not considered the dopest at the time. Kane no, 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 the dopest but, at the time. But, but wait, I have I have a question. Who mm-hmm. and and I'm asking this like serious question. Who did like the Fat Boys influence directly? Biggie. Prince Marky Deep influenced, like, Biggie. you know, yeah. Biggie and I would say and all the, I would say all the heavy set rappers. Like, I, think, did. I yeah. think Heavy D would be like the Fat Boys influenced me. I didn't well, Prince Marky D did. But, but, but wait, influence like <laughs> artistically or influence like, like image wise? Because there's a difference there. I mean, I'm talking see, about can... musically. Like, you can't just say, oh, the Fat Boys were the first heavy set act in hip hop. So every heavy set person afterwards is a, is a product of Fat Boys. Like, I, that, that's that's not <laughs> enough for I, me. I mean, you I, know? I, I get you, but then I guess then it comes down to how do we break down influence? Because there's a couple of things on here. There, there, there may be a couple of acts who, you know, and, and again, I, I was just 10 at the time when it came out in 84. Like I said, run, I mean, Fat Boys to me may have been a bigger selling point in Crush Groove than Run DMC. You know what I mean? So again, yeah. the human beatbox, that shit was huge. Before well, we had drum machines, it was. Every, so I get y'all that everybody in the 80s can't get in. But if we talking about who's the first one to beatbox, that's kind of influential because every nigga needed a beatbox. Everybody who had a rap group in the 80s had a nigga who was like, yo, give me the beat. And the yeah. niggas beatbox. Like, I, I agree super, with that. That's super influential. Like, you invented a job for a nigga who ain't have a job last week. Yeah, like, Little true. Mikey didn't do shit last week. Now, Little Mikey can beatbox now. Question, he has question for you, Kill. Question for you. And, and I, I don't remember. But wasn't uh, Biz Marking in, in, in beatbox competition before before Buffy was around the same well, time? Well, keep in mind, Biz, the first time I heard of Biz was 87. I got the Fat Boys album when I was 10 and 84. Yeah, yeah that's right, true. Right. You know what I mean? I'm talking about, I'm talking about Biz is a, is a beatboxer. I'm not talking about him as a, you know, he oh, was yeah, a, yeah. I mean, even, he, he, right, right. Um, um, even with Shantae, with um, Def Squad, Def Guy, uh, I know what you're talking about. That's like, Shantae is like 85, 86. So 
Buff was the that was his tagline, the original human beatbox. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So to me, the original human beatbox that that's influenced like I mean. Yeah, like that's huge. Like everybody is beatboxing now. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, so that's yeah, you've been to folks like Scratch and Rozelle on the roots, you know? So, yeah. Yeah. Well, and Fresh and everybody else too, so that's true. Yeah. Babe, yeah. what about you? Mm. Well, first of all, me and Tone did a whole episode on uh, the Fat Boys on that time of hip hop. Um, obviously, that don't have nothing to do with like Hall of Fame. I think like, as far as influence, um, I think I think in a lot of respects, when people look back on the Fat Boys, they think of the the pop stuff. You know what I'm saying? Obviously, some people who were back then, you know what I'm saying, know the the true hip hop stuff. But I think they look at the the novelty act. But you already said it. Like Cool Rock Ski was nice. Like not just a good he was rap. Hard, he was in '84. He was nice. So right. He could be like, yo, truth be told, Cool Rock Ski better, yeah. may have been better than Run, like at this yeah. time. Like, he was barring niggas. He was, yeah, yeah, he was dope. And look, human beatbox, you know what I'm saying? Buffy, one of the greatest beatboxes of all time. I mean, he was the one I preferred over Dougie Fresh, over, over Biz in a lot of respects. Maybe him and Biz I had neck and neck, mainly because of the bass and their beatboxing. Um, but he, like, Beatboxing was a skill on par with are you a dope MC, are you a dope DJ, are you a dope dancer? And to be that guy when it comes to beatboxing, and then you got a bar king over here, then you got a light skinned dude. But I, <laughs> <laughs> in the 80s too? I, in the 80s, that's all. But nah, even even Prince Marky D was nice. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, Marky D was nice too. Yeah, he was nice too. So it wasn't just that they was just. It, Disorderly, you know what I'm saying? Or they were right. chubby yeah. record record. They were like respected as yeah. MCs, as hip hop artists, as parts of the culture. But I feel like their impact isn't as great um, as as some others. You know what I'm saying? I look at the impact of the people we put in. I just don't think the Fat Boys. You can, you know, obviously you can draw a line to a Biggie and a Heavy B. And, and others, but it's not as clear because you can draw lines from other rappers to them as well. So I would say the the, the Fat Boys, you know, they, they're not getting in. They're definitely not on the first ballot. If they got in, it's because, you know, uh, other people ahead of them uh, got in. But yeah, Fat Boys, damn. All right. Damn. Goddamn, niggas invented a goddamn beatbox. This is a raw, y'all a raw fucking crowd. Like, dog that ass. Like, this nigga invented a skill that nobody had before. And this nigga don't get in? No, Kill, he would go into a Hall of Fame as an individual. Does that make sense? Like, he's not enough to carry the whole group into this yeah. Hall of Fame like, for God. me. I mean, he would, he, he would go Yo, in the I'm Hall of Fame with, y'all. like... No, I was gonna say, I get it. They don't get in. I challenge y'all. Go back and listen to this album and listen yeah. to the bar work but that's one that I'm is going about. on here in 1984. 1984. I have it downstairs. I have it downstairs. Niggas, niggas is, in 1984, niggas is rapping like, I go to the store. Yeah. I pick up a shit. No, this shit, these niggas was barring niggas in 84, but I get it. They don't get in. Cool. All right, let's go to somebody else. Shit came on as a matter. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, let's go to uh, Salt and Pepper. 85 is when Salt and Pepper came on the scene. They dropped Showstopper, which was the answer to Dougie Fresh and Slick Rick to show. Um, dropped their album Hot, Cool, and Vicious in 86. I believe that's a hip hop classic. You're talking Tramp, Push It, I'll Take Your Man, uh, God, uh, My Mic Sounds Nice. Um, dropped the second album, Assault with the Deadly Pepper, with Shaky Thing and all that. Black's Magic, very necessary, brand new. Questionable, did they write their rhymes? Because Herb was writing a lot of their rhymes. Now I'm hearing this questionable if Herb was even doing the fucking beat. So I don't know what the hell was going on in Queens at that time. But um, Salt and Pepper, do they get into the Hip Hop Hall of Fame based off of impact, classics, lyrics? skills and longevity tone what do you got on salt and pepper look man at one point 
Salt and Pepper was literally the female version of Run DMC. It's, it's really that simple. I was around at that time. You were too. You remember when Push It came out? It, it changed hip hop because it drew in millions of females to hip hop. So at one point, I mean, females always been a part of the culture. Don't get me wrong. But Salt and Pepper opened the door wide open for not only female fans, but female MCs. After them, MC Light talked about this on T.I. show recently. After Salt and Pepper, it, MC Light wanted to be a, a rapper. You know, Shantae was coming around at that time. All these other females jumped in the rap. And of course, uh, Shy Rock was before all of them. But you know what I'm saying? she It was more or less, she wasn't, you know, mainstream. You know what I'm saying? So, so Salt and Pepper is the standard and the first, basically, female hip hop superstars. Now, I like Black Magic a whole lot as far as the album, but you talking about yeah. legendary singles. I mean, they got five or six legendary singles that people still play today in skating rings and clubs, old school sets. I mean, I don't even need to go any further. Salt and Pepper first, Ballad first, whatever. They end up. All right, no doubt. Eddie, Salt and Pepper. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, they they in there. I mean, they had big singles. I mean, they had uh, the influence. I mean, I think they came out as 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 a you know female hip hop group, and they weren't a novelty act. I mean, they were dope. I mean, you know, they they could rap. I mean, they had dope beats. I mean, for for the time, you know, um, yeah, man, they're in for me. Question, but they didn't write their rap, so they get the pass. I give them, you know, I, I give them a pass for that asterisk. I mean, that's that's kind of what I said, um, you know, when we started. I mean, I think, um, you know, if we talk about not writing rhymes, I, I feel like there's a lot of females who, you know, would would suffer because of that. Um, but I think at the time, um, you know, I think I, I don't know what it was, whether it was a Big Brother thing or or, or whatnot. Like, all right, let me help you write your rhymes, but um, you know. I still think they're impactful and influential. Um, so I'm not in, and right. yeah. All right, Vic, what about you? Absolutely, Salt and Pepper, definitely. First ballad, and uh, not only because they had the, the, the rhymes and the skills, even regardless of uh, any ghostwriting, um, but also they, like, they got the classic songs. And more importantly, when you look at the landscape, of, of art, certain artists now, they were the first to to be able to be feminine in their lyrics because there was a lot of female MCs that were just like dudes, you know what I'm saying? And we liked them and that was probably why a lot of female MCs had um, male ghostwriters because, you know, it, it was a male dominated genre for the most part. So it was kind of like, well, nobody's going to like it if you ain't just like this dude or that dude or that dude. But they brought the sex appeal into it, which opened the door for like Little Kim and Foxy Brown to kind of like take it even further, um, even to some you know rappers you have now. But back then, you know, the, the women clothes was just as baggy as the dudes. But so people come out with push shit. They got the tights on, you know. What I'm saying they got the jackets. I remember uh, sisters and, and god sisters wanting to look just like them. You know what I'm saying? The yeah. Dress like them and everything. So. I remember yeah, Salt was one of the, uh, oh, I'm sorry, baby. No, go ahead. Were you, saying remember, salt? you know, and Salt at one point was, you know, she's kind of like the first female sex symbol in hip hop. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like both of them, you know what I'm saying? But Salt was really, a lot of people was really feeling her, you know what I'm saying? And then they had to let's talk about sex and express yourself and all of that stuff. So yeah, they did open the door for that type of vulnerability for a female artist in hip hop. You know what I'm saying? I'll say this. I remember staying in Fort Greene, Brooklyn, and watching a goddamn Tramp video every day, like on repeat. <laughs> like, because on the third verse, like, Salt pulls up her shirt like halfway, and I'm like a little eight year old, 10 year old kid, like, you know what I mean? So, yeah, Salt and Pepper was dope. Uh, if nobody has ever heard this album, please, I beg of you. Hot, cool, and vicious. Mm -hmm. Push it, Beauty and the Beat, Tramp, I'll Take Your Man, Chick on the Side, I Desire. Mm -hmm. um, don't stop it, my mic sounds nice. Five mics, Porsche, the song Pepper get in? Of course, yeah, absolutely. And I say that um, in, I mean, Tone and Eddie and Vegas already kind of mentioned it, but um, like salt and pepper was the thing when I was in the middle of the prairies of Canada. Like I always go back to that because you guys do not understand how absent hip hop culture was there. 
and salt and pepper for some reason was the biggest thing there. Like I remember it so clearly. Um, they like penetrated that type of environment or that, you know, that kind of area. So to me, that's huge. That's huge. So yes, um, 100% they're in. All right, Vic, you about to say something? Yeah, I think when you look at like what we said about the fat boys, how they try to, you know, make the, they try to popularize them and take them into the pop culture side, but it took a lot away from them. Whereas with Salt and Pepper, they easily were able to, to like transition into pop culture because they were just that big and that good. And um, they were already good the way they are or were. So um, right. once they started making some of those, you know, I guess more pop culture commercial records, um, they didn't lose a lot of steam, unlike the Fat Boys. Right. Rex, Salt and Pepper? Yeah, they get in on influence alone for me. Mm-hmm. Um, right. You got half of New York walking around with a shaved fucking head. <laughs> I was just about to say, the funny thing about yeah, this haircut, ball, if, if people can see it, that haircut, Pepper said she messed up her hair. She like, did. that, this was a mistake, and then right. you just had everybody, that's how influential hip-hop was, that even you shave half, you mess up your hair and it becomes a style. So, all right, Salt Pepper's in. Let's stay with Queens and Herbie Lovebug. Kid and Play, two, three albums. Two Hype, 88, Fun House in 90, Face the Nation, 91. First dropped in 87 with Last Night Changed It All. <laughs> why, why are you telling me to stop, man? That's disrespectful. No, no, big. I'm me? big, big, from the gate. <laughs> I'm just talking to myself. Don't yeah. worry. <laughs> ah. I, mean, I just can't believe what I'm going to say. That's a... All right, Vable, why don't we start with you? <laughs> Man, if the fat boys don't get in, get in play. Are we across the board that kid and play is not getting in? Not getting in. Can't right. get in. All right. All right. I understand. I understand. I, understand. I ain't got no problem. And I like him too. Yo, you know the funny thing, Porsche? Here's the, here's the funny thing, Porsche. I now feel your pain because I'm still fucking pissed about the fat boy. So I feel your pain now about my pain. Like so I feel, more so because, yeah, I feel your pain. I feel your pain. So this is too far. I feel your pain. I like how you said that, Vegas. If fat boys don't get in, don't goddamn kid a play. Okay, cool. I think House Party um, gets in as a hip-hop movie, but not kid play. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> Alright, um, let's go to my part of town. Philly, Jazzy Jeff and the Fresh Prince. We got uh, one, two, three, four, five albums. To me, Rock the House, their first album was a classic with Girls Ain't Nothing But Trouble, everything like that. Um, I mean, Jazzy Jeff, one of the dopest MCs ever. I know Fresh Prince isn't known for it. And I think that this is a hard part about the 80s because, again, I'm gonna bring it up. I'm now, now becoming Porsche with Drake. With the Fat Boys, I feel like Cool Rock Ski was a dope MC. But like Vague said, when most people, I feel like if you weren't 10, if you, so if you're not 46, I don't know if you really truly understand the impact of that first Fat Boys album. Because like Vague said, you see them as the Disco 3. I feel like if you weren't there in 85, 86, when Will was a battle MC in Philly, so I get it. I totally understand why most people don't look at Will Smith as a dope MC because when they think about him, they're thinking of parents just don't understand. Uh, I think I could be Mike Tyson. I mean, shit, my third album, I wrote Will Smith on. Yeah, but you know that would be my brand new funk, though. Right. I'm, I'm, yeah. We're going to get there. We're going to get there because, I mean, I definitely think Jeff and Will get in. Um, it could be the Philly bias because, again, I was there. I, I knew about Will Smith being a battle MC. We did a Philly ep about two or three weeks ago, and people were like, yo, I had no idea what the hell y'all saw about Will Smith. Like, I had no idea he was coming up to radio stations, battling Steady B right there on the spot. And I'm like, yeah, Will was a battle MC. But I get it because if you only know about Will Smith from the Fresh Prince of Bel Air, then why would you know anything about those things? So to me, Jazzy Jeff and the Fresh Prince get in. Again, I feel like they had the influence, the impact. They had one classic for me. Um, I felt like at that time, Will Smith had dope flows. He had skills. And again, I don't think they, some people say they had the longevity. Um, Again, by the third album, I was kind of done. And to me, after that, it was just, you know, summertime. And I don't mean to say just summertime, because summertime is probably one of the greatest hip hop songs ever. Well, I don't think the summer session can ever get set off until somebody plays that song. But I think they get in. So what do you think about Jazzy Jeff and Fresh Prince? I think the influence is going to get them in. 
Um, you think about the influence Jazzy Jeff has had on producers in hip hop, and then just with Will Smith being a star, he kind of took you know what Curtis Blow and other people did, and he ran with it and, and parlayed that into Hollywood. But in terms of just the music, he was a good he was a good rapper. And, and again, you think about summertime; it's probably one of the top five of ten you know relevant songs that they'll play play at cookouts for you know 50 years from now. You know what I'm saying? So we're talking about impact and influence. You know, people start trying to make little summer anthems and things like that after Will Smith and, Jazz, and, and Jazzy Jeff made uh, Summertime. So I think the, the cultural impact of both of them together and separate and the tree that came from under both of them will, will get them in, man. So I'm going to say, I, I'll say yeah. All right. Vague, what about you? Um, I say yeah for a lot of the same reasons. Um, I think a lot of people don't understand that the Fresh Prince meant something totally different before it was an NBC show. Like he was considered like an MC, like a, to be reckoned with. You know what I'm saying? Um, even even having the versatility to do a song like Parents Just Don't Understand um, just shows his versatility. And then DJ Jazzy Jeff is one of the best DJs ever. I think I think people who weren't there saw glimpses of it when you know when they go to like. Uh, DJ Jazzy Jeff Instagram and see a video of him scratching and they're like, damn, I didn't know he got down like that. Or like in the case of Will Smith, he would sway. He do brand new funk. Right. People looking at Will Smith like, wait a minute, who's this guy? This ain't Big Willie Styles. Like, no, this is the Fresh Prince. Mm -hmm. So I think, you know, influence, skill, impact. Um, they definitely, you know, I mean, even though at the time, People didn't really want them to win the, the Grammy. This was still, like you said, this is a, a battle rapper won the Grammy. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, he won it for uh, having different songs, but I think it just speaks to the talent of, of them as a group. Um, so I think they definitely get it. All right. If you've never peeped this album, go listen to it. Rock the house. I mean, Jesus Christ, you can see how young these dudes are. If you can kind of see Jeff, like these, they look yeah. like kids. Yeah, you know what I mean. <laughs> um, so crazy dope album, right? Does uh, Jazzy Jeff and Fresh Prince get in? Yeah, for the same reasons everybody else did. No piggyback. <laughs> All right, Porsche. What about you? Yep, that's in. All right, Jazzy Jeff and Fresh Prince get in. Uh, hey, can I make one little quick little comment? Yeah, please do. I thought it was very dope when, you know, when the guy Jonah Lucas did that song dedicated to uh, Will Smith and when Will Smith came back and, and did that remix. I mean, the dude sound real good on that song, man. It's a 50 plus year old dude. It, it, I, I thought it was I thought it was nice. And, you know, Tony, you bring up a good point with that. And it goes back to something you said earlier, Porsche, with ghostwriters, because Vega and I both know somebody who was a ghostwriter for Will, but he like you said, Porsche, he had been writing for years prior to that. You know what I mean? So I think that that's a great point, too, of bringing that in. That Because as soon as you said that, the first thing that popped my head on was that he probably ain't write that shit. And it he made me start thinking it. about... Right, right, right. But it made me start thinking about Ghost Riders, but then it brought back to what Porsche said earlier about Will had been a writer for so mm -hmm. long, and now, yeah. you know, you, you need help. All right, Jazzy Jeff, Fresh Prince of N, Special Ed, Another Brooklynite, Youngest in Charge, 89. Legal, 90. I believe Youngest in Charge is a five my classic. I believe Legal is a goddamn great 4.5. Catch me on the right day, I'll give it five. Revelations was not good in 95 and still got it made in 2004. I won't even hold you, I ain't even here. So, Special Ed, the Special Ed get into the Hip Hop Hall of Fame. As much as I love Youngest in Charge and Legal, I can't put them into the Hip Hop Hall of Fame. Uh, Tone, what about you? This hurts, man. But I'm gonna have to say no, Eddie. You've you already said a minute. No, I said no. Um, you know, for for me, it's um, you know, even though that first album to to me is a bona fide classic. Um, as an MC, um, I don't feel like he was he was never on the the top of the heap. You know, so the grace that Big Daddy Kane got, um, Special Ed doesn't get because he was never considered a top MC. You know, he never held that mantle. So. You know, his chance would be to have the longevity and, um, you know, multiple dope albums. And I mean, I think the two is, is just not enough. All right. Vague, what about you? Uh, I don't think so. He, he didn't 
he didn't have the longevity to me. Obviously, he had two dope albums. Um, also, I don't I don't think he had that big of an impact. He was uh, one of many dope MCs around that time. Um, you know, obviously top tier, but um, I don't think anybody ever really had him at number one. Maybe in certain moments or whatever. Um, but you know, and like you said, skill skill wise, you know, he was dope. But I, I just think he wasn't like enough to to be in a, a Hall of Fame. All right, Rex. Nah, I agree with Vic. I just don't think he had enough. I agree with you. Those first two albums, like they stay in my rotation. Yeah. Um, I love that second album, Twelve Year Old Kid. I bang that shit to the tape rope. But he just didn't have that that one thing that took him over to to, to vote him in. Hey, hey, Rick. You talking about uh, you know that song? Uh, you wish you could. Oh, man. That stays on repeat at the crib, dog. Oh, that, that was one of the first albums that I would listen to to try to repeat the scratches. On the wow. Like, you know, first getting my turntables at 12 and listening to those albums, you know, you want to emulate what you hear. And that was one of the first songs that I tried. Who the Howie yeah. T? I, try, I tried to do that scratch for yeah. six months. I got it down now, but I tried that shit, man. But no, nah, he just doesn't have it. Take him over the hump. Sad, but. What about you, Porsche? Yeah, I'm with um, what everyone said. I, I don't think he, he gets in. All right, so Special Ed isn't in. Here's another question mark. The funny thing, I thought this person was, I would have put him in the Hip Hop Hall of Fame, but now looking at our criteria, I'm, I'm, I'm wondering where this is going to go. We're going to go with Bismarck. He's got one, two, three, four, five albums going off, which is a classic Ooh. to me. The Biz, the Biz Never Sleeps. I need a haircut, all samples cleared, and we can worry. I'm on the fence right now because he doesn't have a discography. He doesn't have the longevity. I can't ever say like he had the lyrics or the flow or the skills because he wasn't writing his rhymes. And then when he was writing his rhymes, I wasn't getting fucking the vapors. And I wasn't getting that caliber from when Kane was writing his rhymes to when he started writing his rhymes. Um, I gotta say, Biz don't get in for me. I, I got. I mean, that's crazy for me. But I'm just looking at the prior to this show. If you would ask me, I would be like, hell yeah, Biz gets in. But looking at the criteria we came up with, I mean, I don't know if I can put him in. You know what I mean? Um, so, what about you? Once again, this hurts. I don't think Biz gets in first ballot for me right now okay a lot of uh, impact a lot of whatever but I, I i can't put them in right now now i'm gonna go to you porsche but let me ask this because i want us to be cognizant of the words we're using impact what impact did biz have on other people like what where can we draw a line like a a diet like a family tree diagram like who did biz influence well, to one me, thing he was, like, was the all samples that when he had to go to I, court. I, but but that's, not a that's not I, a positive. Just because you got robbed. Because you got robbed. It tells other people how not to get robbed, though. Right, right, right. But what I'm just saying is, like, that wasn't purposeful. Like, that's you know true. what I mean? Him being the first person who gets sued for sampling clearance, I can't say was influential in the culture. You well, know? it made people make sure they got their shit cleared before they get their music out. Right, right. But I, for me, I can't say that's an yeah, influence. You know what I mean? Like, you, that's like saying, you know, 50 influence people to watch their back before they get in their car because he got shot nine times. So, <laughs> you know, shit, we got, you know, 50 save lives because after 50, you know, you got to watch your back. Like, that's really not influence. I would think when we're saying influence and I would think we're thinking about on the mic, who did you influence to say, I want to rap like this or I want to be like this? You know what I mean? If people start making more like, like comical... You know what I'm saying? Hip hop and songs and things of that nature after Biz Market. Like just you know when he did just a friend and spring right. again and third I don't uh, I don't young girl blues so. and all this shit. I mean, did people start I making think, those kind of tracks? I think more people were making that prior to Biz because I was painting Nay's room one day and we was listening to one of my old school mixes and we was listening to Dana Dane's Nightmare and you know, like a uh, girls ain't nothing but trouble. And she was like, Yo, y'all was real silly. It ain't before back Biz then. though. No, 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 but keeping in mind, Biz. The first album, 88, came out, I mean, Going Off came out in 88. Dana Dane, Send a Fella, that's 86. You know, Girls Ain't Nothing But Trouble is 86. You know what I mean? And keep in mind, the songs you're talking about, Just a Friend, that's nine. That's 1990. That's 90. You know, we're now in the 90s now, so nobody's making comedic hip-hop anymore. 
You know what I'm saying? It's too in. hard for me. Vague. Does Biz get in? Uh, um, it's difficult to say that because I think I think what Biz has is I think in certain categories I think he has impact. There was a time where Biz had the hit singles. Like I would turn on, you know, Miss Mr. Magic and you could do a quick set of Biz and it was oh, the first yeah. album was out. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Trust me, I trust me, I champion going off and I never understand why nobody calls it a five mic classic. Cause to me, it's, every song on classic. there was was classic. Yeah, it's absolutely so trust classic. me, it hurts me too. I classic. feel like he got the one classic. I feel like he got the impact, but he definitely don't have the longevity. Um, there's the lyric situation with the ghostwriters and stuff like that. Impact on other people. It's like he had an impact, just like Buffy had an impact. But it's not like Rozelle. Like Rozelle was dope because it was dope to see beatboxing kind of come back a little bit to the mainstream. But it was short lived. It was like a novelty thing. So. Um, as tough as it, it sounds weird to say Biz doesn't get into the Hip Hop Hall of Fame. Yeah, it sounds yeah. crazy. Like I said, before this show, before we came up with the criteria, if you would have asked me, it wouldn't even been a question mark. But yeah. we got to go based off the criteria we came up with. Porsche, what about you, Biz? Yeah, I don't, I don't put Biz in there, but I just want to say, like, Biz is a super likable guy, you know? Like, you, that's I think that's where... I'm having trouble, like in my head, as you guys are talking, I, I'm like, God damn that criteria. Because when you come up with a criteria, you, you kind of got to check the, you got to check the boxes. And if you don't check the boxes, like as much as, again, like I said, Biz is one of the most likable MCs. Like you just, you just like the guy. He's awesome. Um, but unfortunately for this caliber of, you know, yeah. like whatever we're like this whole hall of fame caliber, unfortunately, Biz just comes up a little short. We gonna say it? Yeah. So I, I want to say that. Um, so we're, we're 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 talking about MCs and and groups. Um, if we had like a section of the Hall of Fame for like hip hop elements, that say like you know you can include you know beatboxers, which Biz will fall into, along with you know breakers, graph artists, DJs, you know all the other elements. I well, think you know what? Let, for that. Well, along, well, well, along with the fat boys, they'll be in for that. But as an MC, I don't think he gets in. Well, you know what I was going to say? Then maybe we should open it up to that. You know, so and what? it should be for the whole culture. So if we're not just talking about MCs, then we want to salute DJs and we want to salute breakers and everything else like that. Where does Biz fit into that criteria? I think I, I think he got to be up there as far as like influential beatboxers. I mean, he wasn't the first, but you know, I think at his time, like he was highly recognized, and he was doing it on a, on a big stage. You know, and, did you just you know, did you just use the biz, did you just yeah, <laughs> did you just use the big line that he was highly recognized? Highly recognized is the thing we were talking about. Right, 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 right. Okay, I like that. And I see. I see exactly why I started laughing. I see you play, boy. Um, all right, so yeah, we, we, we'll, we'll, we'll have to break that up too because you're right. If this is similar to the NBA, if this is the basketball hall of fame, if it's the hip hop hall of fame, then it's not can't just be you know for for that. So we will come back to biz because for everybody, this is a series of shows, we're gonna go through every era. We ain't getting through the 80s tonight, so you know, it's still a million groups on here. Um, let's go here. The Beastie Boys, they came out in 80. 80 84, 85, I apologize, 85. I feel like they got the classic album with License to Ill. Um, they got Paul's Boutique, Check Your Head, Ill Communication, Hello Nasty, The Five Burrows, The Mix Up, Hot Sauce, Committees 2. Um, for me, again, I think it, it, this is hard. I would say, uh, I would say yes. And this is why I'm going to say yes. In 86, License to Ill was humongous. They oh had God. a huge influence on white MCs. I don't know without the Beastie Boys, do we get a third base? Do we get an Eminem? Do we get that? And I'll say this. If you haven't seen this and on Apple um, TV, they have a Beastie Boys documentary. Watch that. That made me respect the Beastie Boys because there was so much I didn't know. Because I won't, I won't hold you. I checked out after License to Ill when I heard Paul's Boutique and I didn't hear that Rick Rubin type sound and 
I kind of wrote the Beastie Boys off. You know what I mean? So, but from after watching that and then going back and listening to Check Your Head and Ill Communication, yeah. you know, even if we have to put a pin in this for people, because if anybody was like me and checked them off after License to Ill, I don't think it's fair to really kind of comment. You know, I always say it's on the timeline. I hate arguing with people and then they be like, oh yeah, I never heard that. Well, what the fuck we been arguing about then? Like, so I feel like we gotta be, if so, this may be something we put a pin in and come back later, but I highly recommend if you haven't, been a fan like throughout the years, watch that documentary. I had no idea the influence they have in hip hop, outside of hip hop, worldwide, just everything. So I think they get in. I'm seeing heads shaking. So Tone, the Beastie Boys, do they get in? Look, man, my brother's a DJ in, in the 80s. And when that license to ill came out, he played that shit as much as he played Run DMC and, and whoever else that was large out at the time. I mean, Beastie Boys took not just rap, but music by storm with License to Ill. You know, and even that they follow up albums were huge albums, not just the hip hop, but again, they did start, you know, going into other, you know, segments of music and it was still highly respected, man. But you just, they have to be in. You know what I'm saying? There's just nowhere around. The viewers around during that time, the damn Beastie Boys came out like the Beatles. You know what I'm saying? Like, they were really dead. Like you said, you saw this document. I haven't seen it yet, but I Dude, remember. It's, it's so I'm going to watch it, but so I just dope. remember. And they had a lot of style, man. And they, they were fun. The production, first of all, like, it was just incredible. Uh, Which I didn't know that Ad Rock did the bulk of. It wasn't Rick Rubin. Ad Rock okay. did the bulk Okay, I think I remember hearing that. It just, yeah, not to be the dead horse. They, they're, they're in for me, man. Just, it is what it is. All right. What about you, Porsche? Yeah, I mean, I mean, like you guys may or may not know, I don't really mess with uh, Beastie Boys that much. I, I don't in general, but License to Ill took over, I think, everything at the time that it released. I remember it so clearly. And whether it's a gift or a curse, it opened up hip hop to a lot of, like, it, to a demographic that otherwise may not have heard hip hop before. And to me, that's, that's that's very very um notable um so for that reason alone i mean it would be silly i don't i don't love license to the ill you, you'll never see me talk about it I'll, I'll never bring it up it's not on my top list but i do recognize it as a classic album i know the impact it had because i was very much alive at the time and for the same reason beastie boys i mean they like tone said like they just did a lot um as a white group in hip hop at the time. Like it was just crazy. So yeah, for me, they, they definitely get in. All right, Vic. Absolutely. For well, all the okay. same reasons everybody else said. All right, Eddie. Yeah, man. Um, I think, you know, definitely like it was a classic, um, you know, they had the, the records, the, the influence. I mean, I think the way, you know, what, what they were able to do to the hip hop genre and kind of open it up um you know um a lot of experimentation you know i think we look back now like if 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 someone wasn't aware at, uh, of the at the time of where hip-hop was and you know they look back and they may not see the experimentation but at the time it was um and they continue to do it you know with each of their albums like i saw the documentary too um, you know, so uh, yeah, it, it, it's eye opening, but I do remember those records as well. So, yeah, they right. definitely get in. All right. And, Rack, you good? Yeah, I think they get in just based off the of impact. I think them being the first major white group to go crazy as they did, I think that helped push the culture, um, right? Mainstream wise, so they get in. All right, no doubt. For again, for people who didn't see it, Apple TV, get the free week just to look, look at that documentary, totally eye opening. Uh, like I said, I had checked out right after License to Ill. I didn't hear, I, I heard Paul's Boutique. I didn't like it. At that time, I've learned to like it now just because, like, it didn't sound like License to Ill. So I was like, yo, what happened? At that time, there was no internet. I didn't know they weren't on Def Jam. I didn't know, you know what I mean? I didn't realize they left the label. It was just like, yo, this don't sound like this. I don't like this, but please watch the documentary. Let's get two more in before we call it a nice slick Rick the Ruler. We're talking about 85 coming out with the 12 inch of Lottie Dottie in the show. Two of hip hop's biggest songs ever. Um, 
So just that alone, the Great Adventures of Slick Rick is debut album. I feel like it's a five mic classic. The Rule is Black. I'm probably the only black person alive who loves that album. I don't think it's a classic, but I love um, that album. Um, and then uh, the artist storytelling, which was Rick. Uh, after getting out of jail with behind bars and all of that good stuff. For folks who don't know, Rick got locked up, um, I want to say back in 87, 88, um, and, and like did his 90s. bid. Like it was the 90s? Yeah. yeah it was right, my 90s. bad. So then he got, all right, so he got locked up in 90. Um, so that, of course, derailed his career. Um, but I definitely have Slick Rick given in, I mean, for everything that's on here, impact, yeah. influence flow skills long the longevity piece is there i mean it's kind of fucked up because of jail but you know i think for everything else he definitely gets in porsche slick rick a hundred percent and i, I mean right. yeah you you nailed it every he checks all the boxes all right uh ed yeah i mean i think just just off those first few singles with dougie fresh and his debut album i feel like he he will get in but then, you know, the fact that he came back in 99 and dropped that art of storytelling album, which yeah. was dope, yeah. dope for the time. Like, he didn't sound dated, you know, like, for, you know, what what, what was in first records, like, 82, 83? Like, well, like, 90, 30, like, 90, like 90 is 84, it's 84, 84. 84, whatever. But, I mean, to, for him to come back, you know, be locked up, come back, you know, 99, and put out an album that was a contemporary album, all the features he had. Um, I mean, crazy. Um, you know, I had Outkast on there and Raekwon. Nah, he, he gets it. All right, no doubt. Rack, what about you? Anytime Ghostface asks you for your jewelry for a show, and you show up and give him all your truck jewelry, his influence is there, man. I think he's influenced a good portion of the 90s rappers. Uh, I mean, you look at, you look, yeah, you look at Nas, you look at all of those rappers, and they're gonna tell you, I, I'm I'm a descendant of Slick Rick in one mm -hmm. way, shape, or form. He gets in, period. All right, so look, Lottie Dottie, the show, children's story. Yeah, I just stopped mm -hmm. right there. Culturally impactful songs. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, Slick Rick is your favorite rapper's favorite rapper in a That's lot right. of cases. That's, That's the reason right. why in 1999 he can have outcast and raekwon and nas and all these people on on the art of storytelling it's a respect thing because those like his sons in terms of storytelling you know yeah. scarface and, and and a lot of ice cube a lot of these guys got a lot of the ideas for stories from slick you know what i'm saying so i mean it just great adventures was considered at the time it came out right there on the same level as you're paid in fools and, and you take the nation of millions you know what i mean that's how large um you know slick rick debut was you know what i'm saying so yeah man like, every box is, is checked man that's the ruler baby come on all right and Vic, what about you yeah i think he checks every box um especially considering the longevity because the the two out or the album in between well yeah the two albums in between the rulers back which was somewhat a disappointment to me even though there's records on that i like and behind bars were records that were released once he was already in prison you know what i'm saying but when you look at the two albums that were released when he was a free man you you know what i'm saying and look how far you know one is in 88 the other one's in 99. Yep. so you know what i'm saying it's not only the impact he had on earlier but the skills to sustain it um the hit records like you said lottie dottie and the show were huge before he even dropped an album you know what i'm saying and slick rig was one of the main reasons why i mean you had snoop dogg do that record over you had nas rap like him on several several um songs like way later um jay-z did this song called the ruler's back like slick rig is ingrained in hip-hop so right. he's first ballot easy all right. And it's funny you said that about Lottie Dottie to be, I mean, going back, that's the first time I can remember hearing curses in hip hop. Cause I could remember having to go to my man's house because his older <laughs> brother had the record. You know what I mean? To, you know, which wrinkle pussy. I can't like niggas wasn't cursing in songs like that and talking about all that. And the first time I heard about Bally's was Slick Rick. You know, even fashion, you know, Rick had that thing. You talk about influence shit. Look at Dana Dane's ass. That mm -hmm. nigga was a, that nigga was, you know, he, he was 
You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> Dane was like, yo, he's from London? I'm like, talking about Dane and Dane. I'm like, no, nah, he ain't from London. She was like, so why is he rapping like he's from London? Ain't that fronting? You said front ain't good. I'm like, yeah, it's not. I'm like, shit, now you got me rethinking hip hop. Like, but you know, and that all came from Slick Rick, you know? So, um, yeah. all right, let's get out of here with an easy one. LL Cool J. Started in 85, 13 albums. To me, Radio is a classic. Bigger and Deafer is a classic. Mama Said Knock You Out is a classic. Mr. Smith is a damn good album. Um, influences there. I mean, Slow Jams. I mean, maybe Hip Hop's first sex symbol. I mean, not to mention the battle raps he's had throughout the years and, and the times and everything like that. So to me, he checks every box. I mean, hell, with an 84 radio came out and I want to say Mr. Smith had to be 94. Put it this way. When radio came out, I was in fifth grade. When Mr. Smith came out, I was a sophomore in college. Yep. If that ain't if that ain't a run, Same I don't here. know what, yeah. what the fuck is a run. If you can go from 84 to college and you've been the soundtrack of my life for that long, you know, and this is why I tell people, L's in my top 10. And people like, LL, I'm like, nigga, you must be 30 or younger to not think that LL. I mean, if you don't have it, that's cool. I, but to me, I don't know. When you talk about longevity, that just speaks to me. You know what I mean? And I'm saying three classic albums out of five or out of the six, like that's a good run right there. Like, um, so yeah, uh, of course, hell. Yeah, for sure. Um, right. Yeah. I mean, it, it goes without saying he's, he's just been, he's been, he's so multifaceted and I feel like he just is, has so much skills in so many different ways that it, it, he's, he's like, a crowd pleaser. I don't know how else to say it. He just, dudes love him. Girls love him. Like he's just, yeah, yeah. I mean, he's he's fantastic for sure. All right, right. Yeah, man. Longevity well, alone, he gets in. Dog. I ain't even got to. I ain't even got to piggyback right. to keep going. He gets in. So we we good with El getting in. Everybody knows El gets in. Checks every box and creates new ones, man. Yep. Yeah, man. he's in. Yeah, one, 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 one quick comment real quick i was listening to the goat album the other day and just the date the uh intro song on the goat album i was like damn man, it's 2000 and this dude is really rapping like this but he started in the same era that run dmc and the fat boys were in i mean he's really rhyming on the goat album you know what i'm saying like lyrical yeah, it's, right. crazy. it's just insane, man. I mean, it's Uncle Hill, man. It's, it goes without saying. And again, not for nothing, he's battled. You know, he may be the most battle-tested MC ever in history. You know what I mean? And never, and never ducked the battle. Um, we gonna end with, the, we gonna end with this one. I don't know where this is gonna go. Cool Mo D. Hey. We are talking about the treacherous, three, <laughs> but we're, but we're, but you know, but we're talking about '80s. So we're talking about him as a solo artist. First album was Cool Mo D, 1986. Go see the doctor. I used to love that song. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Um, How You Like Me Now. I can't say it was a classic album for me, but The Wild Wild West and How You Like Me Now are two classic songs. I mean, I, I doubt you put on How You How You Like Me Now and not get somebody who's over 40 nodding their head, reminiscing, remembering, you know, whatever. Um, he had Knowledge is King, Funky Funky Wisdom. And I'm going to stop with the 2000s because I didn't even know he dropped the album in 2016. We just going to stop with that. Wait, Personally, what? yeah. I mean, yeah, yo, they said this nigga had an album in 2015 called Brand New Heat, an album in 2016 <laughs> called Notice. I, I, I'm assuming this is a song, All You Beautiful with Steve Arrington from 2007. Wow, Steve, he did a song and, with Steve Arrington? And, and for people who don't know, Steve Arrington is I Make Your Week in the Knees, Steve Arrington. And then there's yeah, a cold song called Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what would you say? What you say that? He said basically Danny Terrier. Why are you in the club <laughs> with Danny Terrier? Um, and then it says he had a song, I guess, called Body Him with Earth, Wind, and Fire in 2018. I don't, I don't know. I have no idea how Kumo D linked up with Earth, Wind, and Fire like 30 years after Earth, Wind, and Fire was dope. Like, body you, right. Um, I, I don't have Modi getting in. I'm sorry. I don't feel like he checks the boxes for me. I don't feel like, you know, he, he does it for me. Uh, so, and not for me, because one of the things I should have said at the top of the show is that this has nothing to do with like. And I, I it's not like I dislike Modi. I don't think anybody up here dislikes any of the MCs that are going to come across this page until we get to Drake finally for Porsche. But I don't think that, you know, this is, but getting in the Hall of Fame ain't about like. You know, this ain't like, oh man, I can't put such, such, 
in the basketball hall of fame because I ain't like the fucking bulls. Like you can't. This has nothing to do with like But Drake, I Drake just, never gets in because he doesn't write. So like that's Well remember we gave what well, we gave other people asterisks, but we're not even going to go into Drake. We are nowhere near the two thousands right okay, now. Thank so God. we just gonna we just, <laughs> just gonna stay here. Because that's right. Gonna we just gonna stay after. here. Um but for me he just doesn't check the boxes. And again, I was a Mo D fan. Like that first album, Cool Mo D, go see the doctor. That was huge for me, but I can't give it to him. Uh vague. Cool Mo D, does he get into the Hip Hop Hall of Fame? Uh, I don't, I don't think so, man. I think he's like, he's like special ed, but probably rated higher. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. For, because he had more of an impact. Um, you know, he he did a lot more. You know, he was a battle rapper too, um, but he definitely don't have the longevity. Uh, LL saw today. Um, who's the goat? Uh, <laughs> but. I, I kind of feel like with Mo D, it's like, nah, he just doesn't check enough of the boxes for me. You know what I'm saying? He has a lot of classic songs. You know what I'm saying? He probably has a classic album to some. Um, but I, I just don't think like the totality of his career and his impact and, and everything that we think about for some of these other artists. I just think he was like a moment in time and really only remembered by those that were there. So. Your point, Porsche, Mo D. Well, I was just gonna say exactly that. Like he just wasn't memorable enough. Um, so for me, it's just sort of fleeting. Like it was a moment in time, but not long enough to sort of, you know, check those boxes. So for me, no, doesn't get in. All right, Eddie. Yeah, I mean, I think um, you know, I, I we 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 had talked about this offline. Um, I think he's probably more remembered for the battle with LL. And, you know, it's debatable whether, you know, who, who won or, or, or whatnot. But, you know, I think when you look at careers, you know, LL took off and he kind of took a dive. Um, right. So I, I think that speaks a lot. So now nah, I don't think he gets in. Funny thing with Modi in the battles is I've always, you know, he, of course, for people who don't know, in 85, he battled a busy B. 84, maybe. At no, Harlem, no, you know? no. It was before that. 83? Yeah, it was around 82, 83. The Harlem War okay. battle, man. Yeah. All right. Um, and it, it's funny because Mo D basically beat Busy B because Busy B was the chief rock and party MC. So Busy B coming in there on some old throw your hands in the air. And, you know, he's the master of ceremonies. You know, back in the day, for people who don't realize this, the DJ was bigger than the MC in the beginning of hip hop. You know, people came to see Grandmaster Flash. They didn't come to see nobody else rap. They came to hear Kirk and the DJs. That's why you had the DJ's name coming first for a lot of groups because the DJ was more important than the MC. So I think Busy came to that battle like, hey, we just, I'm coming to rock the party. And Mo D like went for the jugular. And like, and I guess like Tone said in 82, 83, that was like, oh shit. Like, was niggas rapping like yeah, like niggas rapping like this. But then the same thing happened to Mo D because I felt like L was a step ahead with the lyrics. So like the same thing he did to Busy B, I felt got done to Mo D basically. Um, uh, Rack, what about you? Does Mo D get in? Nah, the only thing I remember cool, uh, cool Mo D for is that damn Cody had on in the self destruction fucking video. <laughs> <laughs> um, like Vague said, man, his career just ain't do it for me. Um, I don't see, I don't see much influence. Um, albums, no. Lyrics, maybe, but overall, no. All right, and Tom, what about you? All right, so for me, real quick, and 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 I'm I'm in a minority. Uh, Mo D um, is one of the exceptions to rules to me. Yeah, I can't imagine a hip hop hall of fame without Kumo D in it because at one point when we was really young, people literally considered the first three kings of hip hop to be Mo D, Mel and Mel, and Grandmaster Cass. When he did the battle with Busy B, he actually made battling famous. This has been spoken about by, about, uh, by Rock Kim and Kane. Everybody talked about that. That right. tape, that Harlem World tape, circulated in New York, all on the East Coast. Even it even made it to California. You know what I'm saying? So battle rapping became famous because Kumo D destroyed Busy B. Now what happens that Karis wants to talk about that maybe there's no him going at Shan without Mo D doing at the Busy B. You know what I'm saying? So this changes hip hop. You know what I'm saying? So his impact actually from a battle standpoint, he is the pinnacle of that, of the battle. You know what I'm saying? He's also like the first intellectual MC, rapid fire rhymes. His rhymes in 83, 84, 85 was, you know, it's the precursor to like the Nas and Jay and all of them, the intricate lyrics and all that. Well, he was considered an intricate lyrical MC in like 82, 83. 
You know what I'm saying? So, and with the AL battle, it is a star. He looks like a star. So some of the star power beat Mo D. If that's what this, and I know you don't like the, that one song, uh, kid we talked about, but just yeah. lyrically, Mo D was right there with LL. But since he started so early rapping, he stayed almost old school when hip hop was starting to change. So he kind of got like forced it. He got lost in history almost, and it's almost like he's an ancient artifact, man. But he's an amazing MC. And so for me, there can't be a hip hop hall of fame without without Cool Mo D. But, but here's like, the thing: does he check the boxes for you though? Like when we talk about well, classic don't albums. check all the boxes. That's what I'm saying is one of the things I said when we first started is there's gonna be an exception to every rule. Because one of my one of my criteria was having at least 10 years of in the game. You know what oh, I'm saying? Oh, see, I thought we I thought we were saying you don't have 10 years in the game, you have 10 years before you are considered. Oh, well, now I was talking about making music for 10 years. So you're talking about making music for TV. Okay. Okay. But I just think okay. there's going to be some kind of exceptions with certain artists, just like in basketball, it might be an exception because somebody's career was cut short. Tracy McGrady just got in the Hall of Fame. But here's the thing. With Biggie, I can sit here and show you the impact is there, the classic mm -hmm. songs are there, I can mm -hmm. show you the influence is there, I can show you the flows is there. So Biggie's only missing one for you. And I can write out the cool 10 years. stuff. For people from that era, but what I'm saying is, but what I'm saying is, is if we're looking at this from a point of we're voting on this, you're looking at it like oh, lost where the the, <laughs> well, no, no, but I'm just saying like even off of that. But for the classics, for the classic albums, he doesn't. Do you feel like he has a classic album? Nope. Just that, that. Okay. Does he have a classic song? Like okay. I mean, how you like me now is dope, but I don't know if it's a classic song. I, I so he doesn't have. Well, I think the Wild Wild West is a classic song. Okay. The influence, your influence for him is the battle rap? Absolutely. He is the battle, he he started battle rap, made it popular. That's exactly what he did. Okay. I mean, that's just what it is. All right. I'm not mad at that. This, this came from that. all the great MCs. It ain't me saying it, because I'm not a rapper. No, 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 no I, totally, from, I, I totally get you. This my from my, my, my question. But my question to that is then why then is KRS's Bridges Over attributed to being the first like diss song battle whatever kind of track then like where what that, happened that was like, it, was it was a record. record it was a record yeah, it was a record, record. Yeah. It, was a record. Yeah, it was a record whereas like right. what Kumo D did with Busy B was more like surprising right but a, I just mean audience. like Cool Modi's never mentioned or barely mentioned unless you go digging for it. Like, I just feel like if someone had that level of impact and influence, you would hear Cool Modi's name a lot. And well, the MCs do mention them. I mean, the, the, the ones from that era, they, I mean, casual fans don't talk about them, but with but, one and but Rocky the fans Rocky, talk, they talk about, about the bridges over all the time. The fans talk about what LL did with cannabis. The fans yeah. talk about, um, even like Roxanne, Roxanne, all that stuff. Like, but the fans don't talk about Cool Modi. So again, I have a question mark there. Because it happened so long ago. And I think it's because it happened so long ago. I don't know about that. I don't know about that. And I think the other flip of it too is that by it being, it's almost like saying, you know, here's a great example. I mean, maybe it's not as great example, but for me, I talk about Tracy Lee's demos all the time. That right. was floating around Morgan when I was there. But nobody else heard that shit. You know what I mean? So I know the Harlem World Battle happened. I know it's on YouTube now. You know what I mean? But I understand exactly what I, I can't say that Bo D invented battle rap and got it out to the world. It got circulated to a certain group of people. Right. I never heard I, I'm fucking hip hop to the day I die. I never heard it until that shit was up on YouTube. Ice T right. said he heard it. He got a tape and he was in California. I'm not right, right, about but people right, in the right, country. Right. Right, right. I'm not. I'm not just saying that. But what I'm saying is that the the I don't think the masses heard. No, you know what I mean. I, I so I, I can't. I can't say Modi invented battle rap or he put battle rap on the map because a rack of folk ain't hear it. You know what I mean. Yeah. So I feel you, but I can't like that. Like I said, that's something that circulated amongst the era. It's an era before us as well, too. It happened right. when we was seven years old. Right. Exactly. What are you gonna say, back? The difference is radio. I mean, the bridge is over right. was on the radio. The, the I mean, yeah, but that's the thing. But, but wait, but, again, but that's the thing. That's it's almost like word, it's word of mouth. It's like it's almost like a word of mouth battle. Like but so, yeah, I can sit here exactly. and say, also, man, I think. Just, they, huh? Go ahead, Porsche. Sorry, I was gonna say the bridge is over. Was kind of again on the radio, but to what extent? Because I heard about bridges over 
in the middle of nowhere Canada, but I never heard about Cool Modi's influence in that way. Do you know what I mean? I want, I promise yeah. you, Bridges Over was never played. KRS One was never played on the radio when I was at any age. <laughs> like I just never heard. Well, KRS I mean, the Harlem World Battle happened in New York. Yeah, in uh, eighty, Bridges yeah, Over happened right. in New York, but one had the benefit of being on the radio, whereas the other one didn't. Mm -hmm. um, right. Hip hop wasn't even being played on the radio like that. Cool Modi was battling. So it didn't have the same sort of it was it was word of mouth and you heard about it and you might know somebody who have a tape you don't you know, all you knew walking away was that Kubo dusted busy B and that was the end of it but when they came to KRS One not only did you hear about the song from your friends but then you could turn on the radio listen to Mr Magic I mean not Mr Magic but, but listen to one of the you know old hip hop joints and actually right. hear it. Yeah. So it was different. But that, but, but to me, that's why I can't give it to Mo D because right. it's more of like a, it's more of like a a hip hop rumor or something. I mean, I know it happened, yeah, it's but it's you know, it, it, it's, it's it's yeah, it's almost like hip hop folklore. Even though it happened, because only certain people, like Tone said, yep. this is really for our OGs. This I'm 46 and I didn't know about it, so this is really for like that 50 crowd. Like I'm that's sure true. somebody 50 was on here, they'd be like, oh, I'm with you, I'm with your man Tone. You know what I mean? So. It's all those things. Ed, I know you had something to say. Oh, no, I was just saying, um, I, I was thinking, I'm like, damn, you're like. Yeah, you froze. Oh, Larry, oh, you froze. froze. Ed, Ed always about to yeah. say something and he freezes. I, I, I know he, he was. Uh, I know what he was so about it, to say. Once Kumo we, D took some damn shades. <laughs> <laughs> that was it. Like, yo, oh God. Yo, <laughs> here's the funniest thing. I the first time I saw Mo D with the Alfred Shade was in was Strat. in Strat, the movie. And I didn't even know that that was cool Mo D. Yeah. That's right. Like I didn't even know he was Mo D because he took the glasses off. Mm -hmm. All right, y'all. We gotta have to come back for another F of the A's because I still got about another 20 groups down here uh to get through. Um this was dope, Wait, man. Drop, I mean I drop the names as the teasers. Um we got Ice Cube, uh Schooly D, KRS and BDP, uh Kwame, Run DMC, Eric B and Rakim, Public Enemy, NWA. That was just uh, some of the rest of the names. Yeah, we that we, yeah, that, yeah, yeah. Oh, I got some sleepers coming. Yeah. I got some sleepers coming. That's gonna be because again, most of these are gonna get in. You know what I mean? I thought we were gonna get through all of this tonight. So, you know, I, I that's why I had it. But I got more sleepers coming in. That should be some good debates. They good looking for the idea. I like this criteria, you know what I mean, that we got, and I love it because it keeps us on task. It's almost like a mission statement. You know what I mean? That's like it, 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 you can't divide from what we came up with. Hey, give them all the info, good brother. Where can they get at you, man? Uh, you can follow me on Instagram and Twitter at, at Vegas World INC, and you can check out my podcast, Hip Hop Now Podcast, available wherever you listen to podcasts. And also on YouTube, me and Tone, that time in hip hop. We can school you to the fat boys, even though they ain't get into the whole thing. <laughs> we still school you on the fat boys of everything. Yo, I'm, I'm like Porsche, man. I'm still hurt, but I got to keep it moving, man. Porsche, where can they get at you, man? <laughs> on Twitter, at Cherche Love Porsche. All right, My DJ Rep. boring these days, sorry. <laughs> All you got to do, well, we're not going to go. Okay. <laughs> DJ Rec will give him everything good, brother. Uh, new mix up will be up this weekend on Mixcloud. Just follow me at DJ Rec One. Uh, Twitter is DJ Rec One. Instagram is DJ Rec One. All right, no doubt. Tone, give him everything, good brother. Twitter, Into the Dome. On there, you can hit Into the Dome dot com. Check me out. That's it. No doubt, Eddie. Give him everything. That he froze Yo, again? At Twitter, oh. at Teddy Riley One. No, I'm just playing. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, at, at, at Twitter, Teddy Riley One. I'm just playing. Uh, at, <laughs> at Eddie D80. And then on Instagram, Eddie Got Soul. All right. Y'all already know what it is with me. Kill Apartment 5B on Twitter. Kill 889 on uh, Instagram. We'll make beats for food. Got a dope remix dropping tomorrow. A uh, new Trey Lee single, remixed it. Got my brother Yao on it. Yes. Shit is crazy. Shit is stupid. I ain't even gonna hold you. That shit is dumb. Um, so yeah, we gonna get uh, get with y'all next week, man. Thanks, thanks a lot, y'all. Peace, y'all.